Hi. Hello. How Hello. are you? Good. How are you? Good. Hold on one second. I'm going to sure. get this graphic up so that people tuning in can see what's going on here. And it worked. Great. Give me one sec. All right. How are you? I'm okay, you know. Good. Just, uh, a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, let's send her some love because she was very, very nervous to come on here today. I know that she, she was feeling it. So, guys, let's just send her some comment love right now. <laughs> Put her mind at ease. That Thank this you. Will Thank be you. Painless. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else did such a great job. So, I'm hoping I channel their energy and you know, just go with it. We'll do a fantastic <laughs> I see lots of people are saying, go Devin. <laughs> so we're good. So guys, I want to introduce you. This is Devin. She is representing Women Rising, which is a fantastic organization. Um, you guys are located in the Jersey City Heights, right? Oh, we're McKinley Square. McKinley Square, sorry. Mm -hmm. McKinley Square. Um, and they uh, do a lot of relief effort for women and families um, and mostly focus on um, kind of eradicating domestic violence, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. in in Jersey City and other areas. So um, I will let you go into that. You can introduce yourself and talk about what Women Rising does in Jersey City. Okay, so my name is Devin Tierney. I'm the Development Communications Coordinator for Women Rising. Um, and if you've ever reached out to be a volunteer, you know that I have a five minute spiel that I will not say. Um, <laughs> but I will let you know that we help the community uh, through women and families in the community through crisis to self-sufficiency. And we do that through four core programs with the addition of a new pro, uh, partnership with the state. So what we're most known for in the community is domestic violence services. So we're the state designated provider for domestic violence services. Um, we have a 24 hour hotline, a shelter, um, and, and a whole plethora of other, you know, partnerships with community organizations, municipal court, everything. Um, and then we also have youth and family services, which is all of our counseling for the organization. Um, we do individual, family, supervised visitation, and triage. So anybody from the community can come to Women Rising if they're in need. And if we can't serve them, we resource out. So um, we also have our Village of Families program, which you know Dylan from, um, where we house 22 formally chronically homeless families. So, um, and we're... I'll go into what we're doing now with everything. Um, and we have our fourth program is our Community Economic Development which uh, helps place anybody from the community in jobs. Uh, we do job training programs and um, we have a whole resource team of different uh, resume assistants, jobs within the community, jobs outside of the community and all that stuff, especially during this time. Um, and then our partnership with the state is to help stabilize um, uh, maternal health in Hudson County. So that's throughout the state of New Jersey, um, but we're the partnership in, in Hudson County. So we're healthy women, healthy families. And that's Women Rising in a nutshell. Um, and through the, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, we our domestic violence department is 100% functional. So um, we have a shelter in an undisclosed location and it's an imminent danger shelter. And um, that is completely running <laughs> and we have our hotline and everything of is still running through our DV department and our staff are on the front lines and they're going in and I see our director is um, actually in, in, in the live and she's amazing and all of our- Well, say hi. Hi, Joan Eileen. Hi. <laughs> and they're really doing great work in making sure that um, victims of domestic violence are protected right now and um, potential victims of domestic violence know where to turn, whether that's Women Rising in Hudson County or the other our partner organizations in counties throughout the state. Right. So, um, and, uh, uh, so how long has Women Rising, uh, when, were, when were you guys established and how long have you guys been working in Jersey City? So we were established in 1905. So we're 115 years old. Wow. <laughs> yes. And we've been in our McKinley Square location since 1928. The building was actually built for Women Rising. So um, at the time we were YWCA and um, we just served Jersey City. And then in the 70s or 80s, we partnered with Bayonne and then started serving all of Hudson County. And in 2001, we underwent a name change, but it's just in our name. So right. we still serve the community the exact same way, just funding purposes, we went through a name change. So Women Rising, 115 years strong. Amazing. So if you could think about maybe um, 
what is so you guys are mostly focused or are you mostly focused on domestic violence or is that just what you're most well known for it's what we're most well known for so okay. each of our program focuses on on their their services um fully mm -hmm. um and domestic violence is just what we're most known for but the scope of work we're doing is is the most in hudson county so with the shelter the 24-hour hotline um we're constantly promoting our domestic violence services because we want people to know that we exist um and if you're in danger especially during this time with social isolation please call women rising and, and get the help that you deserve right i think what's i think um per a conversation that we recently had I did not realize, I did not realize how dangerous quarantine is Absolutely. for someone who is in a relationship where there is domestic violence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, 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 that person who already didn't have a lot of freedom now is not even able to leave their house. Yeah. And that is an incredibly dangerous place to yeah. be. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe you can speak a little more on, um, you know, on that subject and then yeah. maybe think things to look out for or mm -hmm. things that people need to be watching out for in the community. Yeah, so um, I definitely, as advocates of domestic violence, um, we're very concerned about the state of um, domestic violence survivors and victims during this time, um, whether they're currently in the relationship or not. Um, I was actually talking with our domestic violence response team coordinator today, Margaret Abrams, mm -hmm. um, and her she was telling me about a client who um, is experiencing PTSD and she's not even with her abuser anymore. So right. you know, there's emotional impact, there's, um, there's, there's a safety concern. Um, and, you know, we talk about mental health all the time and, and anger is a part of that. And if, if their abusers are getting angry and, and getting more fed up with the quarantine, who are they going to take it out on? And if they already have a history of domestic violence, they may take it out on their 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 spouse, um, their wife, or their children. And so, many people don't know that organizations like Women Rising exist in Hudson County and in counties throughout our state. So, what we really just want people to know is our phone number, is two zero one three 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 five seven zero zero. If you suspect that somebody you know is a victim of domestic violence, call us. If you're a victim of domestic violence, call us. Call if you're not comfortable calling um, a local organization, call the the, the um, nationwide hotline. Just get the help that you deserve. That's really where we're at right now. We want to make sure that people are aware that people um, may be experiencing this. So check on your loved ones because um, you don't know what somebody's going through, and you don't know if if your your cousin or, or your brother, or, I mean your sister or your friend is going through a domestic violence relationship because everything could look really peachy and, and, and nice from the outside, but we don't know what's going on in an intimate relationship. So just checking on your loved ones and making sure they're okay. Uh, just blanket statement for mental health, but for domestic violence, I think that that's so, really Right. So um, what, what maybe are some things that people need to look for that are telltale signs of you know, domestic violence? Is it like controlling? Is it like mm -hmm. restrictions on things? What would you say that people need to look out for in those situations? So um, domestic violence is all about control. And maybe it's about looking at what their relationship looked like before quarantine. So did you stop seeing your friend less? Did they stop calling as much did, when you called them and they didn't answer or they gave an excuse related to their spouse or, or their um, significant other? those are signs that they're in in the process of you know trying to isolate them and and maybe now they're they're obtaining their goal of isolating them they're not reaching out as much yet they're always they're they're in a relationship so you know those are some signs um if you've seen any um thing prior to uh quarantine of within your your friend or your family member and how they they were reacting or behaving around their their partner or significant other um you just taking that all into consideration and, and reaching out. Absolutely. And then we had an issue, uh, a situation here in Jersey City over the weekend. Do you mm -hmm. guys have anything, um, anything to respond to that? I, we are devastated by what happened on Sunday. And um, an intimate partner murder suicide like that is, is just devastating. But it really impacted our community. And um, I think it's a perfect example of you don't know what's going on in somebody's relationship. Exactly. And 
I think if you're scared to reach out to a friend who might who you might suspect, just share our phone number, share a graphic from our page and on your social media because you don't know who's paying attention and right. who needs that information at that time. So right. I, I think, you know, sometimes reaching out might it might be um, a little bit, you might feel intrusive and, and nervous to do that. So I always say, just share that phone number. <laughs> That's all you need to do. Share the email address, share the page, because that might cause a ripple effect in somebody's life. It's like, right. Cause some people might feel, feel like they don't want people to know that they're in this situation. Yeah. And that if you send them a phone number directly or yeah. a graphic directly mm -hmm. that now they're embarrassed because you know, and sometimes pride gets in the way yep. too. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a great piece of advice yeah. just to share the woman rising um, website page, phone number, Instagram, just to get that information yeah. to a blanket of people, you know, um, and then see who everyone can see it. Yeah. And by sharing it, you're, you're uh, kind of identifying yourself as an advocate and people might reach out. So I'm not on the DV staff. I'm just a development and communication coordinator when rising and I'm obsessed with our mission, but I'm not an advocate, but people reach out to me all the time because they feel safe telling me stuff. And then I automatically refer them to our domestic violence staff. Right, right. But because they know that I'm, I'm about the cause, people are more likely to reach out to me. And I welcome that. I want people to reach out. I'm not going to offer course. advice because I'm not in that place. Even right. working for an organization like Women Rising, I'm just not in the place, but I refer to, to my, my director or to another um, person in our DV staff. And I, I send that phone number, slip in that phone number. It's the yeah, best yeah, I can yeah. do. Too. Go ahead and say the phone number again. 201-333-5700. <laughs> please reach out. Please call us if you need help and tell your friends. And I don't know the, the national hotline by heart, but I do have it. It's on our website. We share it often because we only serve Hudson County. Absolutely. So. And we, we are actually going to have an article going up on everythingjerseycity.com tomorrow. And it's going to have a list of all the phone numbers, um, donation sites, um, volunteer opportunities, information. So any information from this live stream today that will all go up in an article tomorrow for everybody to have that information at your fingertips. It'll be um, available tomorrow. Promise, promise, yeah. promise, promise. Great. Great. <laughs> Amazing. So um, are there any, is there anything else that we need to speak about um, or organizations or people you'd like to mention about uh, Women Rising? Well, you know, everybody has just been amazing to Women Rising and reaching out and all of our people that are interested in volunteering. Um, you know, we had one person who was set up to volunteer and tutor one of our staff um, clients from our Village of Families program. And um, the, the, they were set up literally for the Tuesday before everything went into effect. And um, so we, she reached back out. We reached out to her and said, do you have like a laptop laying around? Because our, some of our clients don't have any computers at home. Right. So if we wanted to continue the tutoring, we can't do that. And her name is Carrie. And she said, I could do you one better. And she raised enough money to get every single person, every single family in our Village of Families program, so 22 families, a Chromebook, which wow. is our, our, our clients were not only missing out on schoolwork, you know, I know, I know uh, numerous people mentioned the packets that uh, schools are distributing, which were great to keep learning, but, you know, there was a social aspect that they weren't taking place in because they couldn't attend the Zoom conferences, but they were also missing out on calls with, with their counselors, um, not only just Women Rising, but many of our clients have, have um, counseling sessions outside of just what, what we offer. Right. And we couldn't do that because they didn't have the technology to do so. So, you know, I don't know if Carrie's on here, but she's amazing. And she, she, don't, she raised through her friend group over $2,000 to make sure that this happened. And wow. Yeah. And, and our director, um, and of the village of families program, you know, she was a complete advocate and our staff, Diana and Quinzella, they, they've been, delivering to people's houses, our, village, our youth and family services, the counseling. They've, um, you know, been uh, going to ShopRite to buy food for our clients and, and delivering it straight to their houses. And our, our staff has gone above and beyond to make sure that, you know, we, you know every day we, we handle crisis, but right now we're making sure that, that our clients are supported in whatever way possible. So it's really been fantastic. And, and, and organizations, I, uh, small businesses have been reaching out. Lord Abbott had us working for three hours today, separating diapers and, and, and comforters and so much for our clients. And we just appreciate it. A lot of our clients, you know, 
leave their their homes with nothing and so everybody that reaches out really does amazing work for us and, and we're so, so what kind of what kind of donations um do you guys most need is it clothing is it diapers is it monetary donations like what are the things that you feel like are the most valuable that people can be donating to you guys so i would say um right now the best donations are gift cards and monetary donations i know one um, person that you had on said that he likes to um, give the, the clients money so that they can, they're in control. And John Eileen, um, our director of domestic violence services is a gigantic advocate for that because, you know, at Christmas time, we could give our parent, our the parents that are staying in the shelter gifts, but there's no control in that. They're not buying the gifts for their client, for their kids. So mm -hmm. it kind of takes like that, that specialness out of it. And they didn't choose right. the situation. So, you know, going to shop right might get them out of the house so if we got a shop right gift card you know um for fifty dollars we can give it right to our clients and they can go shopping and, and feel that control again and right so it's really you know about the, because they the have to learn, they have to manage their life and if yeah. they're just yeah. getting give getting things all yeah. the time i guess it's really hard to just kind of uh fall back into what an everyday life would be which would be managing your own money and getting out going out there and buying your own Absolutely. things yep yep and, then, and and we do accept the other donations, so you can reach out to our info account, and we're gladly, you know, talk through whatever. We we do not accept um, gently used donations, especially during this time, but I will give you a list of organizations uh, that do, and please never hesitate to reach out to Women Rising, the info account. Um, we're, we're always happy to help. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually remember um, you guys came up when um, a couple of years ago. Um, my brother-in-law uh, had a crib and they bought a different crib mattress for that crib and I was living in the heights at that time mm -hmm. you guys came up and I remember going and I dropped off because it's bright it was brand new still in yeah. the package everything yeah. um and I dropped off that crib mattress to you guys so um so yeah so before I'm we sure you probably communicated with me and me back then too <laughs> I, I bet I did yeah <laughs> It sounds familiar to the story. So yeah, yeah. I brought, yeah. you know, I brought the crib mattresses. That's yeah. very cool. But yeah, so you guys can, people can donate. You said that women leave their home and they don't have the, they have the clothes on their back and that's it. So I'm guessing that, um, you know, new clothing, yeah. you guys will take new clothing. Um, and, well, and what I always say during this time, you know, especially with all my ads on Instagram, switching from cute outfits to sweatpants. I always say when I when I just had a rough day, my favorite thing to do is go home and put my sweatpants on and yeah. donations of pajama, new pajamas and new sweatpants are always like just a great donation because, you know, our, our women are going through one of the most difficult things that you can go through and, and really have that bad day effect so they yeah. want you know just put something comfortable on and feel at home so you know I never th cool. yeah you are so right because immediately I would be like oh I will go get like some trousers and yeah. something for a job and, yeah. or you know they'll have you know these we'll take that I would, too <laughs> I would never but I would have never thought to buy pajamas yeah mm -hmm. sweatpants pajamas yep yeah and for children and women so but if, if anybody's interested just reach out to the info account and Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We yes. really enjoyed having you on today. And it wasn't that bad, right? It wasn't that bad, but I'm just like avoiding looking at me and just looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Guys, let's give a round of applause for Devin and Women Rising for coming in here. Send some clapping to the comments, get some thumbs up and some hearts going because she did, so a fantastic, she did a fantastic, fantastic job. And yes, Franny, pajamas are the new normal. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Everybody was amazing. And I loved hearing everybody's story. And we worked so closely with, you know, Chickpea, Jersey City Relief Fund, York Street. We love them all. Uh, Angela McKnight, everybody. So yeah. thanks for all the great work. Jersey City is a great community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on and uh, we'll be in touch soon. And anything that everythingjerseycity.com can do for you guys, if you guys have anything going on, news, press releases, things like that, always just reach out to me. You got my email now, sister. Yes. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.